In this video, we'll go over the answer to question 15 of the 2021 New South Wales HSC Chemistry Exam. The question states, what is the pH of the resultant solution after 20 mils of 0.2 mole per litre hydrochloric acid is mixed with 20 mils of 0.5 mole per litre sodium hydroxide? We then have four options ranging from 11.8 to 14.0 as options A through D. Let's put these options horizontally to give us a bit more room to work with. To answer this question, we start with writing out the equation for the reaction that takes place, if any. When HCO acid is mixed with NaOH, which is a base, we get an acid-base reaction, forming a salt and water. Specifically, we get sodium chloride salt and H2O. Looking at both sides, we can see that the equation is already balanced. Same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. Therefore, we have a one-to-one -one ratio of HCO to NaOH reacting to form the sodium chloride and water. We recognize that the reactants are both strong, a strong acid and a strong base. So the resultant salt will not affect the final pH of the solution. This means only any remnant hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions will actually affect the final pH. Based on the one-to-one -one ratio, we need equal amounts of each to have nothing left over. In this case, we would have pure water and a pH of seven. Therefore, we need to calculate the number of moles of HCl and NaOH that we had at the start of the reaction in order to determine which is the limiting reagent, that is, the one that gets used up completely. Using n is equal to C times V, we can calculate the number of moles of each. For HCl, we multiply its concentration of 0.2 moles per litre by its volume of 0.02 litres to find that we have 0.004 moles of HCl. And then for NaOH, we do the same thing to get 0.01 moles. We can see that there is less HCl Therefore, it is the limiting reagent. We can calculate how much NaOH is in excess by subtracting the two. This gives us 0.006 moles of NaOH left over, and therefore 0.006 moles of hydroxide ions left over. We can now use the fact that pH and pOH add to 14 and the formula for pOH in order to determine the pH of the resultant solution. To find the concentration of hydroxide ions, we use C is equal to N on V. The number of moles is 0.006, as we have calculated, while the volume is just the sum of the two solutions that were added in the question. The two 20 milliliter samples add together to give us 40 milliliters. Therefore, the concentration of hydroxide ions is 0.15 moles per liter. The pOH calculation then is just the negative log base 10 of this, giving us a pOH value of 0.824. Then the pH is just 14 minus the pOH, so, plugging in, we get 13.2 rounded to three significant figures, as in the question. Therefore, option B is the final answer. To understand what is happening a bit better, we can visualize the scenario described in the question. Let's get a 20 milliliter solution of 0.2 mole per liter HCl and a 20 milliliter solution of 0.5 mole per liter NaOH. To visualize the resultant solution, let's get a large beaker and add in the HCl, and then add in the NaOH. Therefore, we end up with a 40 milliliter solution of both the HCl and NaOH. Now, all the ions can interact. This means the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions can join to form water, and the resultant H2O just joins the aqueous layer, i.e. the water containing the ions. We then do this for the rest of the hydrogen hydroxide ion pairs. With all the hydrogen ions used up, we have an excess of hydroxide ions. This is because the solutions were equal in volume, but the NaOH was more concentrated. The Na and Cl ions do not form a solid and remain in solution. They do not interact with the water molecules either, and therefore only the excess hydroxide ions determine the pH. Therefore, we just need to work out the pH based on the concentration of excess hydroxide ions. Let's look at a different way to calculate the final answer and expand a bit on the steps we took previously. We know from the first slide that HCl and NaOH join to form NaCl and H2O. We can arrange the information in a table, showing the initial, change in, and final number of moles for each reactant and product. As we did previously, we can use C is equal to N on V from the formula sheet and rearrange to get an equation to calculate the number of moles. To find the initial number of moles of each reactant, we follow the formula and get 0.004 moles for HCl and 0.01 moles for NaOH. 
Before the solutions are mixed, we have none of the products, therefore zero moles of each. As we saw with the visual on the previous slide, once the solutions are mixed, hydrogen and hydroxide ions will react to form water, and sodium and chloride ions are left over in solution. With a one-to-one -one ratio, it means that equal numbers of each are required to form the products. However, we saw previously that hydroxide ions were left over, as there were not enough hydrogen ions. These came from the HCl, and therefore the HCl was the limiting reagent. Now we have the numbers to prove it. There are less moles of HCl, 0.004, therefore HCl and NaOH are reduced by 0.004 moles, while NaCl and H2O increase by 0.004 moles. These are the changes that occur as a result of the reaction. If we combine the initial with the change, we get to see the final number of each species. HCl gets used up as 0.004 minus 0.004 is just zero. Next, the initial 0.01 moles of NaOH is reduced by 0.004 moles, leaving behind 0.006 moles, while the number of moles for NaCl and H2O is just 0.004. In order to find the pH, we will need to use the formulas pH plus pOH is equal to 14, and pOH is equal to the negative log base 10 of the hydroxide ion concentration, because we know it is the hydroxide ions that are in excess. We can now calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions using the equation from the formula sheet, which in this case will be the number of moles divided by the volume. We know 0.006 moles of NaOH left over, which means the number of moles of hydroxide ions is also 0.006 moles. The volume of solution that these hydroxide ions sits in is 40 milliliters, or 0.04 liters, as we showed with the previous slide. Substituting the values and plugging into our calculator, we get 0.15 moles per liter. We then plug 0.15 into our formula for pOH to get 0.824, at which point we can use the relationship between pH and pOH to plug in this value to find our final answer of 13.2. For this video, the following references were used. Schell and Hogan have a great section on exactly this type of question, with a step-by-step -step guide to answering questions where acidic and basic solutions are added together in varying concentrations and or volumes. This therefore covers when one of the solutions is the limiting reagent and is a good source for more questions like this. Blackman et al. have separate sections covering limiting reagents in general and calculation of pH of strong acids and bases. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.